Hello and welcome to Inside the Fairbanks at the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Um, for the last few weeks we've been showing you around at different exhibits in the museum and um, we've been exploring what's around in the different um, sides of the museum and some cool things that we have some history about. So today we're going to have something that's really interesting. We're actually going to be looking in the Japanese exhibit where we have um, um, a really awesome collection of um, metsukes, which are parts of traditional um, Japanese clothing. And we'll be able to talk a little bit more about what that really means. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So um, after we see this exhibit, um, Bo, is our collections director, is actually going to tell us a little bit about this collection and how we came to have it and the history behind it. So let's get started. So you can find the Netsuke exhibit in the cases that are in the Japanese exhibit. So you'll see that there are various portions about um, what goes into the kimono and the other portions of the traditional Japanese dress and you'll see some samurai helmets. But if you go over to the back cases, you'll see that we have the netsukes, which are these little carved um, art pieces that are um, very descriptive with different images. Generally, um, we have images of people um, or comedic um, images on the netsukes. Um, some of them can be pretty big, some of them are small. Um, and they can have really elaborate scenes. So a netsuke is um, a, a piece of the kimono wear that is um, actually quite important because when you are wearing a kimono, kimonos have various different parts and um, all of the fabrics are held together by a belt and there are no pockets so there would there needed to be a very useful and um non um invasive way of holding fabric or, not, or fabric but just things so you actually notice that this netsuke has string on it so the way that netsukes work are that they would actually have so the netsuke is actually the, the top part that connects to some sort of string or yarn and it would loop around the belt and so it would hold on top at the top um, and then there would be like a little bead at the bottom. You also see that here and it would hold on to the belt and then typically that string would have something holding on to it um, like a case and that would be able to hold items like coins or um, maybe some fabric and these were, um, like I said, very important for a kimono because it'd be very annoying to hold things with your hands. Um, women tend to know this because um, our pockets tend to not be very big. So um, this was definitely something that was very useful with the dresses. Um, and um, if you actually see this here, you'll see that they um, early netsukes were actually very simple and functional, like they were just simply made for functionality. Um, but the Edo period, of which began in, began in the 1600s, um, actually ushered in an era of relative peace and prosperity. And so netsukes, as we see, formed into um, an art form and they were sometimes used as uh, status symbols where um, very um, very descriptive or um, very um, conc not concise um, what's the word um, very complex net netsugeis were actually seen as um, something that was only really available by the wealthy. So you also saw wealthy merchants with them. Um, you, you'll see that majority of the netsugeis that we have are typically made from ivory, which are um, tusks from elephants. 
and also made of wood. So um, you'll see that these two are probably made of wood and then all of the wider ones are made of ivory, but they also could be made from metal if I'm not right about them being made of wood. And this isn't just the only Natsuke um, collection we have. There's another one that is down by the musical instruments. And I encourage you when the museum opens up to come see it because it's very interesting. And um, it's definitely something really interesting to see from another culture that um, took something that could have just been purely functional um, into something that was just a way of um, depicting types, types of art that people really were drawn to. So those were the Natsukes in our Japanese exhibit um, on the balcony in, um, I believe, the north side of... No, sorry, this is south side of the museum and um yeah like i said before i really encourage you to come check out this exhibit once the museum opens up again because it is definitely something that is worth seeing and something that is really cool and you don't always see in a lot of places and this definitely has a tie to the fairbanks family which is very unique and special so um next you'll be hearing from Bo and hearing more about um the background of how it connects to the fairbanks family and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for joining me today. Have a great day. So just a after note, um, I realized that I was saying Netsuke when uh, that you can say Netsuke for um, the um, item that we we're talking about today, but um, it should technically be pronounced Netsuke. So when you're looking at this exhibit, um, Remember that it's called a netsuke or a netsuke, netsuke. Hey, welcome everyone to the second part of this week's uh, Inside the Fairbanks. Uh, as you saw with Hannah's video, we're um, going to be talking, we are, are, are talking about the netskis that the museum has, uh, in particular those that are on display at the museum. Um, so uh, as usual, I'm going to uh, share my screen with you here. Um, and so uh, the, the Netsuke collection that we have here was um, left to the museum by a man named Albert, Albert Farwell, who you can see here in these three uh, photographs uh, uh, at different ages. Um, and he, uh, he was born in 1860 and died in 1936. And uh, he married a woman named uh, Isabel Fairbanks you can see in this middle image, who was the daughter of Horace Fairbanks, um, a cousin of, uh, or brother, sorry, of um, Franklin Fairbanks. And uh, Horace gave the St. Johnsbury Athenaeum to the town of St. Johnsbury in um, the early 1870s. And um, they were, of course, uh, sons of Erastus, Fairbanks, who we talked a bit about last week with um, his pepper, pepper box pistol. Um, and Isabel died in 1891 at the age of 29. And um, they, uh, most of uh, Albert Farwell's collecting was done after she died, um, as we'll see a little bit later with some of the receipts that we have of things that he, he purchased for his collections that were left to the museum. Um, they lived in St. Johnsbury and um, Albert uh, worked at the uh, Fairbanks Scale Company and um, did, uh, did pretty well there, uh, which um, allowed him to uh, you know, start and continue his collecting uh, throughout much, most of his um, mid to later life. Um, and he collected um, a lot, as a lot of uh, wealthier people did at the time, um, even though he was a generation down from uh, Franklin and Horace, who did a lot of collecting, uh, and he wasn't as well off as they were. But um, 
he still was able to collect quite a bit and uh, um, generated a, a collection that was very eclectic and very much like the collections of uh, Franklin, Franklin uh, which was a, sort of a, in the, very much in the style of a cabinet of curiosities. Um, and you can see, um, but you can see in his collections that he had a, a great interest in um, Oriental, uh, especially Asian, uh, sorry, um, China and um, Japan. And um, that is evidenced with his great uh, Metsky collection, but also with these, uh, the Suba collection. Suba is T-S-U-B-A. They are sword guards for uh, Japanese swords. We have about 20 in the collections. Um, these are five that we have. Of, you can see they have a variety of different designs, um, with, just like the, the Netskis do. And um, you can see he collected these uh, obi, which are part of the uh, kimono uh, traditional Japanese um, garments that were worn um, until uh, the early 20th century. And um, he didn't collect a lot of natural history that we know of, but um, a lot of cultural um, type materials. Um, here's some other um, Asian textile pieces that he collected. Um, and these are only a sampling of, of his collections that were left to by him to the museum. And um, he also collected, uh, again, illustrating the Cabinet of Curiosities type of collecting. Um, things that are like this that are more made for people who were collecting, the wealthier collectors of the time, um, a lot of them. Um, ones like this, things like this carving, uh, this puzzle ball, which has um, several layers of that move independently from each other um, and is made out of ivory as is this carving of an, an elephant. Um, they were traditionally done somewhat, but um, again, were very popular with collectors, um, well, wealthy collectors from Europe and uh, the Americas, so um, were marketed to them, um, as well as he also collected a lot of things like th these, which would be considered a, sort of a relic or uh, something similar, um, which are these are just parts of buildings um, like churches and mosques and other buildings um, that we have. Um, that he, he collected these and others, Franklin collected some um, uh, similar things uh, for his collections. And um, so uh, the bulk of uh, Albert Farwell's collection came to us in 1937 uh, after he died and left you know, they were um, settling his estate and uh, he left the, at least the bulk of his collections to the museum. Uh, and as Hannah pointed out in her video, these were the Netskis, which you can see in these images here, uh, were used to hold the, these uh, storage boxes onto the um, the clothing of people who, uh, because the kimonos didn't usually or ever have the um, have any pockets, so they, they needed a way to carry some of the small items that they like um, money or uh, medicines or whatever um, wherever they were going. Uh, so this drawing here shows Netsky at the top, which keeps it uh, helps keep it attached to the obi, which is this middle um, band of cloth, and then uh, there's a cord or string of some type with a, an oji me, um, which we saw in some of our um, our Netskis in uh, Hannah's video, and the, these com uh, boxes, which are several compartments each, um, are called inro. I may not be pronouncing those exactly correctly, but um, that's um, what, what it's called. Um, you can see here a, a variation. It's a, more of a, a pouch of some kind. And here you can see the um, Ojimi beads, which are made of uh, a variety of materials. This one looks like it's ivory 
or bone, and this one uh, coral maybe. Um, and as just as Netsky's uh, were, they were made of different different types of material. Um, and you can see here, I um, found all, found these images to help show what the Netsky's were made out of. Um, many people think they they were just made out of ivory, um, and uh, which certainly many of them were, and that, that was a, a very popular material for collectors um, of uh, of Netsky's. And this one is a, a elephant ivory. They were also made out of marine ivory, like uh, sperm whale teeth and uh, walrus teeth, um, tusks, and um, then wood, uh, boxwood is this one. Uh, also other hardwoods were used. Horn uh, is this one, um, ox horns or um, other types of horns were used sometimes. And uh, this middle round one here um, is ivory on the outside, but metal on the inside here. And this last one um, is an ivory knot, uh, also called vegetable ivory. Um, it looks a lot like um, ivory, uh, real ivory, but it's from, actually generated from a, um, a palm tree in Central and South America and is a, a renewable resource, um, as long as we don't cut down all of the rainforests and um, is looks very much and has a very similar feel to ivory. Um, it doesn't have the uh, grain patterns to it that uh, actual ivory would, would have, but um, it's very hard and um, can be, as you can see here, polished to a, a high luster. Um, and um, so the subjects you can see with these, uh, uh, these Netskis here can be, as Hannah mentioned, um, a lot of different, pretty much any subject. And um, as I've alluded to in this um, presentation so far, um, they, these were a very popular collector's item for the wealthy collectors in the late 19th century and have continued to be uh, throughout the 20th century. And uh, especially in the late 19th century after Japan opened up more to the West um, and uh, Farwell's interest in the um, Oriental cultures uh, mirrored the wider Victorian interest in um, those, those cultures and um, is reflected in our, our, our collections. Farwell uh, collected about 170 uh, Netskis in his uh, in his life, and uh, they um, yeah we uh, we have the original receipts that he uh, or a lot of them anyway from when he was purchasing them, and they were um, yeah obviously a very popular item for for him and uh, one of the more popular exhibits uh, at the Fairbanks Museum. Uh, so uh, uh, let's see, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, we'll be back next week with another um, look inside the Fairbanks Museum.